Good evening and welcome. Tonight we'll be going over the history and geography of Afar in Ethiopia. Now just a quick word about the geography of Afar before we get into the history section. Because Afar has some of the most unique landscapes, not just in Ethiopia, not just in the Horn of Africa, not just in Africa, but the world. It's an incredibly unique place, and it has to do with something that you can't really see on this map, but once I pull up Google Earth, you'll be able to see it clearly, and that is the Great African Rift. Now it starts about here or so, and goes down way far down, um, into toward like Malawi down there in southern Africa. The sun's up right now, my neighbor's stomping around, so, um, forgive the clouds for going over the sun and my neighbor for stomping around above my head. Um, the Great African Rift is a place where two tectonic plates are pulling apart and creates some very interesting different landscapes in this part of Africa. It's why there's a big lake area where Lake Victoria is down there, because literally the earth is splitting apart. But it creates some really interesting places in afar, right where the crack has begun. Um, the area of this, the this part of the Great African Rift area is called the Afar Triangle. And again, you can't really see it on this map, but it's about right here. So pretty much all of Afar is located within this area. And again, you'll be, you'll be able to see it very clearly on Google Earth. But this is where the evidence of the tectonic plate split is most evident to just people down on the ground, not looking up from above. Cracks form in the earth quite frequently. There's some pretty big ones, but the most obvious place you can see here is the Danakil Depression, which is all up in here. This area has lines there because not just is it way, way, way below sea level, but it's also salt flats because this used to be underwater, the Red Sea. This area is also highly volcanic, because again, the earth is ripping apart, and it creates some of the most incredible landscapes up here in Dalal. Dalal is the hottest, continuously inhabited place on earth, on, on average, like over the span of a year, the average high is the highest in the world. There are places in this area that are so hot and um, bubbling and full of sulfur that you literally can't breathe. There's no life in that area. And again, I'll show you on Google Earth. It is just the most incredible, incredible landscape. The rest of Afar is pretty barren save for one place, and that is the Awash River Valley comes down here and all along the Awash River it is very green and lush. Well not, okay, when you think green and lush you have to think green and lush for like a desert region that's being ripped apart by tectonic plates, okay? It's not like the Amazon or anything but it's much greener than everything up here, let's put it that way. And it's along the Awash River that we have our UNESCO World Heritage Site in Afar. Now what makes this valley part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site? It goes right into our history segment. Fossils have been found in the river valley that date back millions and millions of years, and they are fossils of early hominids, um, early or the ancestors to humans. The most famous being found in the Awash River Valley was Lucy. 
and uh, she was, oh, I didn't write down how old she was, I think she was like four million years old. It's the most complete skeleton of any ancient hominin that we have from anywhere. Um, not just in Africa, but throughout the world. So let me pull up the UNESCO page so I can read to you about the lower valley of the Awash. The Awash Valley contains one of the most important groupings of paleontological sites on the African continent. Make sure, there we go. The remains found at the site, the oldest of which date back at least four million years, we'll talk about that in a minute, provide evidence of human evolution which has modified our conception of the history of humankind. The most spectacular discovery came in 1974 when 52 fragments of a skeleton a hair there, enabled the famous Lucy to be reconstructed. Now you can see on this map here, this is the um, Afar Triangle. So you can really see it from above, right? But. Here is the beautiful Awash River Valley. Let me see if there's any pictures. I don't remember. There is a cool video if you want to check that out, but I'm pretty sure I'm not able to show you that. Um, yeah, lots of cool animals here. There's still little hairs on my tablet. Okay. I just like showered and brushed my hair, so that's probably why. So yeah, when I say green and lush, I mean this kind of green and lush, you know, not like a thick rainforest or anything, but much greener than the rest of the Afar area. Where am I going? Gallery. Um, I want to see the sign. The Awash National Park. Pretty neat sign there. Okay, let's set this aside. So, um, Yes, Lucy was the one that's about 4 million years old, but there's another really amazing fossil found in the Awash River Valley that's 3.8 million years old, and it is the earliest found Homo sapiens skeleton. <laughs> Which, like, you think, like, oh, like, Homo sapiens skeletons, you can find those in any graveyard, right? <laughs> but the oldest one ever found. Which means... And we won't ever know for sure. We will never find any kind of link that connects, you know, Homo sapiens to like Homo habilis, Homo erectus. It's just kind of inferred based on what we can tell from their bones. But most likely it was in this area that the first humans evolved and appeared. So in a way, we're all kind of from afar, Ethiopia. If you want to get esoteric about it, I suppose. Um, now, the only information I can find about history in Afar is things that happened, you know, three to four million years ago, or things that happened within the past 50 years. So that's kind of, kind of a big gap in history, right? So, from, for what I'm going to tell you about tonight, comes from me piecing together uh, bits from the Afar culture who live all throughout this area here and from Ethiopian history. So, doing my best with what I got. So, in like what we would consider medieval times like the 1200s, 1300s, this area was pretty split between two major powers, and they would have been Aksum, which would have been like over here, and the Adal Sultanate, which would have been over here. The Afar people, because all the regions in Ethiopia are named after the most predominant ethnic group in that area, so the Afar people actually immigrated from Yemen, and um, we're not sure when they moved here, but they certainly did at some point. And they definitely aligned more with the Adal Sultanate, the Islamic kind of empire over here, as opposed to the Christian empire over here. Which you can imagine there, there was constant pushing and shoving of the land right between the two very different powers. Eventually, the Adal Sultanate would uh, not last and kind of break apart 
to various different other sultanates, and most of them were dominated from the Afar culture. The biggest one I could tell was the Aousa Sultanate, uh, which would have been around here or so, I believe. And again, that, that's all I could really find about history <laughs> from that far back. The peoples, not just the Afar peoples, but the peoples that lived like in this area here, so what's now Eritrea and Djibouti and Afar Ethiopia, had really cordial contact with Europeans once that happened. They sort of agreed to pay off the people here in exchange for safe passage through the Red Sea, which they were happy about. The people that weren't happy about it were the people in the more central area of what we know as Ethiopia. Um, parts of it then were called Ethiopia. And um, again, it wasn't just like cultural thing. It was also a religious thing. It was an ethnic thing. You know, these people had a lot of differences. And they weren't too happy with the European contact. And their suspicions came true when, in the 1880s, the Italians moved in. And they said, um, you know, we want to establish ourselves in this land. And the people here were like, you know, they've been nice to us. Why not? But the peoples down here, led by Menelik II, were like, uh, we don't trust these people one bit. And it turns out that these people were correct. Because just a few years prior, up in Berlin, the scramble for Africa occurred, where every major European power got together, spread out a map of Africa, and drew lines, deciding who was going to take over what. And Italy had drawn up this area here, pretty much all of what's today, Ethiopia and Somalia. So they came in and were like, hey, can we, like, negotiate over how we can, like, share and settle this land? Not realizing that they had kind of more devious plans to just totally colonize the area. So a big battle was fought, the Battle of Adwa. And the people up here, the Afar people, sided with the Italians because they had no reason not to trust these people. Plus, they already didn't trust these people down here. But the Battle of Odd was very significant because it was pretty much the first and probably like only time that a major African power defeated a major European power on the battlefield. And uh, they got the Italians out of there for the time being. And it led to a lot of distrust between the Ethiopians establishing what's what they called the Abyssinia and the Afar people up here, they let the Italians have Eritrea, though, because, like I said, the people here didn't really have a problem with the Europeans. You know, the friend of my... Oh, how does this saying go? <laughs> the enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? It was like that. Um, but that would very fastly change in the 1930s, late 1930s, around 1940, I think it was, when... Um, Italy kind of, kind of, <laughs> Italy, um, changed and became a fascist state and said, actually, this is our land. We're taking it over. We need the resources. We need the colonies to sustain our new form of government. And they swarmed in and uh, pretty much occupied all of this area here. They took it over. And... After the Emperor Haile Selassie pleaded with the League of Nations, they got the Allied powers of World War II, mainly the British, to come in and take their land back. And after that, Afar was officially included in the nation of Ethiopia. So was Eritrea, but um, that led to a lot of conflict that would occur in the Afar region as well. Um, they had a big independence war in the 1990s. It sprang back up in the 2000s, 2010s, and didn't end until I think 2019. So, um, lots of conflict along these lines in modern history. There was also some conflict within Djibouti, pushing back against Ethiopia, Ethiopia pushing back even harder. There's conflict along this border, 
and there is still conflict along this border here. You can see this is where Tigray is located, and in the post-World War II Ethiopia, there was a lot of favoritism between um, certain ethnic powers, again going back to this culture is different from this culture so on and so forth. The Tigrayans in particular were really neglected and pretty much left to starve, especially once the Derg government overthrew the, um, the emperor. The Afar region was also pretty hard hit by that famine, but the Tigrayans are still fighting for their rights and their independence, and there is still conflict within Tigray, and it bleeds over the border into Afar. So, if you're ever going to travel to the far and see the Danakil Depression, be wary that this area along the border is not a particularly safe place to visit at the current moment. And for the most part, that is where we are in the world of Yvar today. Let me grab the tablet and let's look at Google Earth. Let me see. Here we go. I have highlighted afar here for you. You can see the region here, totally landlocked after, um, you know, Eritrea became independent. And I zoom out, you can really see the afar triangle here. If I zoom out even further, you can actually see, whoop, a little too far, you can see the crack that's forming here. So in a few million years or so, we won't be around. The humanity may not even be around. This area to the right here is going to be completely separate from Africa. Um, but if I zoom all the way out, you can see where we are in the world. Right here in an area known as the Horn of Africa. You can already tell, like, how there was like a split here and a split here. The next split is right here. Pretty interesting. So let's take a look at, you can already see the picture up here, the Danakil Depression. Again, it doesn't quite look like it. If I put it on 3D, you can kind of see like the ridges and hills of the region, but it dips down really, really low right here in the lull. And again, you can't really see it from above, but um, if we go to the lull, let's take a look at some pictures here, you can see the absolutely incredible landscape. So this is all salt covered and mixed with sulfur rising up from below, mixing with the salt that left over from the Red Sea and creating this incredible array of colors, and um, like I said, the hottest continuously inhabited place on Earth, it reaches like a good 50 degrees Celsius on average here. It's stinking hot and smelly, and like I said, there are some places that um, are not safe to breathe in the air. It kind of, I wonder if like this is like what Venus would look like, you know, very sulfuric and hot and bubbly and multicolored. Um, obviously Venus would be much hotter, but pretty neat, I think. Absolutely amazing hot springs here. A camel caravan. So there are still people today that go to this area. They harvest the salt off the ground, pack it up on their camels, and ship it out to sell. Still very much happens today. So next I need to show you, I guess we could take a look at the lake. Look how bright it is, right? Um, but what I really want to show you a few volcanoes in this area, as you can imagine. <laughs> there we go. All right. I have to type it in. Um, to Olive 
Okay, now, so up here in this rocky area, this is what I was looking for. The volcanic area. So you can pretty much go up here and just look into the earth in a way. Very hot, very rocky, very lava-y. There's still more pictures of the, uh, the salt areas. Lots here. <laughs> okay, I'm all ready to be packed up. Look at this. Is that not incredible? Um, out in the water in the lake. Ooh, that's a lot of trash. That's really sad. You know, if you're gonna be a tourist, you still have to be environmentally conscious of the area that you're in, especially when it's full of lava. You don't want to feel the wrath of the earth. Is that not beautiful? Goodness. Just a really incredible piece of the earth. I wonder if there's any cool pictures of the camp here. Ooh, there's a camel. These are all big rocky mountain volcanoes and such. Um, but I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. I remember scouring through the rest and not really finding a lot of cool pictures to show you, but honestly I think this area just looks neat from above. That you can actually see the landscape changing due to tectonic activity. There aren't many places in the world like that. This is the best way to do it. So I'm going to end it there for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. I know my neighbor upstairs really enjoyed it. Still thumping around. I hope that you have a very good, 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 good.